Hi guys, so I'm back from my little break from Yu-Gi-Oh! I got quite bored of the game. I, I felt the meta just wasn't really interesting enough for me. So I took a bit of a break. I'm back now in a lesser sense uh, because Sword Soul came out. I love Tengi since they came out. And then this was just my way to be able to play them as a very competitive meta deck. So I went to Liverpool Regional uh, in mid-December and I managed to come seventh. So I thought I'd go through my deck profile. I did want to wait until I had the physical cards back uh, because someone is borrowing them, but it looks like they're going to be borrowing for a few more weeks. Um, so I'll just go through my deck list and I'll explain some of my choices. So the deck is 44 cards. I felt that was fine since there was a lot of searchability and there was just a lot I really wanted to fit in. I, I wasn't really bothered about playing 44 over, you know, cutting it down to 40. Um, so first off we've got the arch nemesis Protoss, it's just really powerful to be able to like shut out a, uh, your opponent out for an entire turn. It was for things like PK um, and then you know for things like Lyrilus Tri Brigade or um, well Lyrilus Tri Brigade I could use the Taya or you know use up uh, the Baron. Um, but there's other decks that it could help shut out because I do have access to uh, wind, water, fire, light, dark, earth. It, it, it can theoretically cover everything. So I thought that was just really strong. Uh, then we'll get the Incredible Ecclesia the Virtuous. So I went really all in on the Sword Soul uh, packages. So three Ecclesia, three Moyi, three Taya, three Long Yuan, and three Emergence. Uh, yeah, Ecclesia just becomes any. Uh, sword soul that you want to see and if you're going second it's free special summon so that was just really useful uh it was good for baiting out ash because you could go like ecclesia effect they dash that and then you you're pretty much free for the turn uh to do any of your searching then we've got three nib uh, i went for sort of the more going second ready build I, I chose to go first but you know i had three nib three dark wheelers so i was prepared for going second um so yeah, it's Neb. It's it's just a, a really good blowout. Um, then on to the Mo Yi. Yeah, three of that. Three Taya. Uh, Mo Yi, I, I really only want to use that turn one. Um, because Taya is better after that. Because I've, I've got stuff engraved to use. Uh, Mo Yi, I don't always have things in hand. Chances are I will. But um, late game Taya is just sort of more consistent to pull off. Uh, then three Long Yuan. Uh, I want to go first, seeing this, set up the Baron, and then that leaves, you know, either of my normal summons pretty much free to resolve. Uh, and the Burning Time didn't come up, but it was very nice and it is something to bear in mind. Uh, for the Tengi monsters, I went two Atara, three Ashina, one Shithana, and two Vishuda. So the three Ashina is just the best one it specs from deck. It does lock you out from special summoning except worms but most things you're going for are worms anyway it's really good if you've maybe had a bit of a brick hand um i went for two adhara i this is really good because you're usually banishing like a long yuan off taya or if you can sequence it you know plan ahead you can banish the more year and other taya and then you're good to get it back with it it's just really good for recursion uh two of Ishida, really strong going second um, just to bounce something. Uh, it's really good for getting around like a window. Uh, and then the one Shithana, this came up multiple times. It's it's really good. Your opponent doesn't like see it coming. People don't read it. Uh, so like you leave a monk, you black out a monk, and then you can Shithana as well just to pop an extra thing. It's really good. People do, just don't read it. Um, then so that's it for the monsters. Twenty four of them. Um, then on to the spells. One Cosmic, this is just, uh, you know, a, a Mystic Mine. Just nice to have as a, a one-of. I didn't really uh, come across Mine at all. Um, but yeah, I, I, I would rather have at least one way to deal with it. I also had the IO and the Blackouts, but the Cosmic just seems like a, a an easy way to deal with it. As a utility card, it's very good anyway. Uh, three Dark Ruler, yep. Uh, I'm happy going first, but if I go second, you know, I want to be able to have these big blowouts. Um, so Dark Ruler and Reboot in the side were 
they were in there to sort of like and you know they've set up and then i can just do that and deal deal with it however i want i can either back here i did actually play the black rose over the yazi because i was playing the reboot and the dark rulers just in case i needed to wipe an entire board and i didn't have access to things um then onto the heavenly dragon circle it was okay um it di i didn't see it enough to really comment on it i have been trying it the card just doesn't want to come into my hand um i have managed to dodge like some imperms or my moe um which is good because you can if they, they go for like the moe you can search the shithana and then you're left with a token spec the shithana and you've still got your level 8 synchro so things like that are really good to do with it in theory it's a really good card and it's a search um on, on another turn i just don't see it enough Desires, I went for Desires over the Small Worlds. Um, small World, I think, in theory, is a really good card for this deck. Um, but I'm playing enough targets that I don't really care what I draw, so the plus one's nice. Um, I I play threes of m most of my important things. So yeah, I, I just prefer Desires over Small Worlds. Um, three Emergence because emergence makes any level seven level eight or level nine synchro thanks to Taya. one summit i i like this card because it can spec any worm if i have a synchro it's just it's it's not a turn one card it's not a going second card really it's very difficult to it's for later on so i feel one of it is enough i don't really want to see multiples um, even seeing one like starting isn't great unless I'm I'm opening like the Taya and I can send the Mo Yi to make an extra synchro. But anyway, one I feels ideal. Uh, Vessel, I was playing this at three and then I, I put it down to two. Um, really strong card, foolish ant, a rota all in one. Um, but if you see multiples, it's it, it just hurts. Um, so I feel two. I saw it just enough, the right amount. Um, then I O in the main. This was just a win condition against some decks. You know, I played against Invoked Automatica. Uh, go first. Their turn, I flip I O, and they go. All right, next game. Um, Imperm because it's Imperm. I felt it was a good going first and going second option, um, and. Yeah, it's Imperm. Uh, I think it's just really good this format. I wanted to play the Effect Veilers as well. I wanted a bit more negation, but then I figured the Dark Ruler was going to be more impactful. Um, and then two Blackout, I feel two is ideal. It means you can send one with the Taya if you want to set up that Chi Zhao to make an extra token, but you also have one in deck. Uh, I think it's a really powerful card. I would debate playing three just so that you, you don't always need to search it with the Chi Zhao and you can go for something else. But yeah, that's the main deck, 44 cards. I'm very happy with it. Uh, then on to the extra deck. So the level... I'm only playing one level, 7 Synchro, and that's Black Rose. I thought with Dark Ruler and Reboot, I wanted a blowout. An Emergence can make Taya into a Black Rose. And I did it once. I rebooted and Dark Ruler the board um, against Invoke Dogmatica. And yeah, I did manage to black rose, but I had no follow up. So unfortunately, I did lose that one. Um, I I think I'd rather just go for the Yazi in future, because Baxia can can deal with two things, which is usually enough when you have that knowledge. Um. So yeah, the black rose was probably a mistake, but I did like it in theory. Just in practice, it didn't really work out. Uh, On to level eight, Dragite. Uh, just a really strong generic level 8 and you're playing the Mo Yi so you can put a water in grave you also have the Shithana but you're not really wanting the Shithana to all stay in grave so the Mo Yi is a, a more like appropriate thing to have in, in grave uh, two backs here uh, it was my theory was that I'd have one if I had to make a Chow Feng and then a second one if I need to use it or there was there has been times in the past it didn't happen at the regional where I'd have to backs here twice in the same turn um Sorry, not 
t- twice in the same turn in the same game. Uh, so yeah, it's just really, really powerful effect. And you know, if if it's after turn turn one or whatever, you've usually got uh, one of the other level fours to go into. Um, especially if you make it with Taya, you can send the Moyi and then back second again the Moyi. Uh, so yeah, just a really really strong card. Um, I think two is just just great. Uh, the Draco Berserker. Um, so that's a level eight worm that you can go into even if you've used the Ashna effect. Its effect is really good because it can banish um, a monster when it activates its effect. So having some, th- if you can only make like two level eight synchros, it's probably going to be Chi Zhao Dragate or Chi Zhao Draco Berserker, uh, just depending on who you're going against. Uh, then on to Chi Zhao, play two of them. It searches for any Sorto card, which is just ridiculous, and it's also a negate. Uh, you get something on the, an effect monster on the field. Um, yeah, two seems ideal. I don't think I'd ever want to play three. Uh, didn't, I've never had the need to go for three, but I've definitely had the need to go for a second one. Uh, then onto the level nines. Only played the Chao Feng. It's really the only good level nine synchro that I can think of. Um, and it was in case I came across um, Drytron or any other light based deck. Didn't happen. Um, but if I mean theoretically, it also stops things like Nib and Lancia. It it's just never really it, it didn't come up that time, but it's something I would keep in there because it can just be like a, a game ender. Uh, then onto the tens, we've got Baron because it's Baron. It's Nominate, and it can also special summon something. Uh, really good. Uh, Ruddy Rose. I mean, it's good against certain matchups. If you can do it against something like PK, it can be like a massive blowout. Um, other like grave based decks, yeah, it's really good against. I think I maybe used it once, probably not. It's it's sort of like it's nice to have, but it does take up a space when there's potentially something better. Um, and then the last one would be the Chen Ying, which I I really like this card personally for its effects. It has really good synergy with Blackout, um, and I think based on the meta. I want, I maybe would pl- I'll be s- playing this more often because I'm wanting to fit in DD Crows in here because DD Crows really strong against Invoke Dogmatica because it can stop them getting the schism that stop so that stops the window which is really difficult for the deck. Uh, it can stop the scythe because you can banish it from grave for its special summons uh, and it can also hit the DPE. So. Yeah, I think DD Crow is something I'm going to try and fit into the main deck. I don't, still not really figured out where, but it's something I want in there. Uh, and it just goes really well with Cheng Ying um, to banish something from their field and grave. Then onto the links, I've got three monk, uh, three came up. Uh, that this was sort of like a last minute change where I put in the third monk. Uh, yeah, it came up. It was great. Uh, and then the one shaman. It reborns any of your worms. Um, then onto the side deck, three lands here because the mirror, PK, uh, you know, it's just really strong against most decks right now. Um, Droll was mostly for Lair Lush Tri Brigade and I played two Lair Lush Tri Brigade players and I didn't see Droll, which is typical, but I definitely think it's worth uh, playing because it can really just, uh, it really caps their power level of what they can do in a turn. Uh, even if they open well, they can maybe end on like Draco Future plus an Avian maybe um, but yeah it, re- it really really limits what they can do in a turn um, so it's worth playing against Lurie Lush Tri Brigade uh, Harpies and Double Twins uh, yeah it was Scared of Backward X the Twins were mostly for things like Schism uh, so that I could pop it before they can get the window out. Uh, Harpies was just, you know, there's a lot of backward decks running about, so it's just a really strong card. Evenly, same thing. If I can, like, Dark Riller evenly or um, Reboot evenly, it's, you know, it, it can just really set them back. They're, they've gone from a, f- a field to one. Um, reboot, yeah, a lot of traps running about at the moment. 
Uh, so I thought reboot would be good and being able to then wipe the board with something like Black Rose uh, just seemed like a really strong option. So I thought reboot would be good. I wish this card was at more than one. Uh, and then double solemn judgment. This was more for when I was going first and I'd be able to stop things like the Dark Ruler because everyone's running a Dark Ruler right now. Um, I didn't actually get to do it. Um, I did use solemn judgment once and I'll talk about that in a minute because uh, it ended up being a mistake. Um, so yeah, my matchups. Uh, the first round was a mirror. I won the dice roll, set up a board, he couldn't deal with it. Game two, he, he went first, set up a board, and then I went Dark Ruler, broke his board, set up my own board, and he couldn't deal with it. Uh, he had just pretty suboptimal hands, he kind of bricked. Um, so I didn't really get to test out the, the mirror very well there. Um, I just opened better, and I won the die roll. I don't really think I could say much more than that. Then on to round two, I played against Invoke Dogmatica. Um, I won the die roll, won game one because he couldn't deal with my board. Game two, he went first, he just had everything. And then I went Dark Roller Reboot uh, and made the Black Rose. But I I had no resources left. You know, that was, that was my entire, entire hand we used pretty much uh, just to do that and he he then could just go all right alistair make uh make mechba and then i was top decking and it just didn't really work out uh, game three was a mistake on his part because i sided out the summit thinking that it wasn't going to be useful um but it meant i could break his board and he thought all right there's nothing i can do he's gonna otk me i'll scoop so he scoops um, but what he didn't know was that I didn't play the summit so, well sorry I'd sided out the summit um, so I wasn't going to be able to OTK um, and he forgot that he had the double draw from Celestial uh, the following turn so he thought he was working with like maybe one DP in a top deck uh, against like a full board um, yeah so it, it was a mistake on his part I don't know if it really would have mattered uh, too much but yeah, he skipped sort of prematurely. He probably could have tried to play it out more. And I don't know what the result would have been in the end. Um, but I did get the win there. Uh, round three was against Phantom Knights. It was actually against uh, Terry, who you'll have seen on the channel plenty of times. Um, yeah, so he won the die roll. And I went, okay, guess I'll lose then. But uh, we've played the matchup loads of times. I nibbed him on the summon of Rusty. Uh, well, Rusty, and then he brings back the Cherubini. Uh, so I nib him there. He just didn't have any follow-up, uh, and then it was game from there. And then game two, I go second again, and I have Lancia nib, and I think, oh, I'll maybe hold on to Lancia. Uh, but he goes um, Torn Scales, Spec Boots, link them into Cherubini. That's when I drop the Lancia, because I think I don't want him even ending on a fog blade if I can stop it. Uh, I nib him at the same point and he sort of felt bad thinking mm, if I'd used the torn scales effect then I might have had follow up um, but ugh, I just don't think it really mattered, I, I saw the nib both games um, then on to round 4 I ended up playing against Benjamin Robinson, uh, he was playing Laroth Tribe Gate, and uh, yeah he had the absolute nuts, I had the nib but it wasn't impactful and uh, yeah, he just absolutely ran over me and I bricked both games. He, oh no. <laughs> no, game two he actually scooped because uh, he bricked. Uh, I, I go first, end on sort of like suboptimal. Um, but before I get to my end phase, he just goes, ah, I'll scoop, go to game three. Um, game three, he runs over me. So it was, two, it was a 2 1 loss. Uh, I finished seventh. He actually ended up finishing sixth. I was the. Second highest X2, he was the highest X2. So my tiebreakers were obviously pretty good. Uh, then on to round five, another Lilith Tri Brigade. Um, and we go to game three, you know, we both win die roll, win the game because we go first. In the third game, it gets a bit of a grind. I had an old version of Solemn, uh, Solemn Judgment, and he goes to nib me, and the judge is standing over us, and I go, oh, this has got old wording, and I knew Solemn Strike and Solemn 
warning could stop Neb, but I wasn't sure about judgment because I didn't have the updated card text. So the judge standing over as we ask, you know, he, he obviously knows that I'm asking about judgment. So the judge says, yeah, you can judge with that. So I go, right, judgment. Um, we, we then realised after the game, the, up, the updated card text, I couldn't actually judgment the Neb. So that was a mistake. It did end up winning me the game. I don't know what would have happened if I if we'd played it out correctly, but it was sort of there's sort of like an asterisk next to my name in my head with with the uh, seventh place because of that. It was a mistake uh, by the judge, and neither we didn't have the updated card text. The, the judge said it, so we went with it. Uh, then in the final round, play against Sky Striker on table two, so I was like, right, I should top uh, even if I lose this. The Sky Striker player, my God, he just he scythed me so many times. Um, he was playing, you know, the Dag to DPE. He played multiple scythe in the main game one. He scythed me three turns in a row, and I'm like, right, game two. Uh, game two, I decide that I'll try going second against this, uh, meaning all of my evenlies and twins and all this stuff. Um, and he scythes me three turns in a row and lands he has me one of them uh so i, I just couldn't play through anything he, he had absolutely everything um and he ended up finishing fourth so um i managed to to get a decent finish uh despite my my little asterisk from the little tribe again player um yeah so that's that's the deck list that's the the tournament report um it will be a deck that I continue to play and I will try and improve it. I do think DD Crow should be in the main just because oh, it hits so many things right now. Um, I do think it would be decent against Lyrilush Tribrigades um, as well because you can hit things like the the Nerval if it's sent for cost off of like the Recital Starling and things. Um, and the Black Rose was a mistake. Uh, I don't know how much that would, really would have changed things at the event. Uh, the Yazi, I don't, I don't think the Yazi would have put in any more work just because of my matchups. But yeah, uh, thanks for watching. We'll try and get more Yu-Gi-Oh content over the coming weeks, and we'll try and get more Digimon content as well because uh, things are sort of back up and running. So we should be able to attend more, and yeah, just see more variety of decks. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Sorry, I waffled on a bit. Um, it's been a while since we've done any events or any tournament reports. So, yeah, please tune in again. Shh, not a zombie channel.